Shalom, shalom. Today we're going to be bringing you a Clouds of Torah and Exodus project. Project. <laughs> we're going to be dealing with a, a very uh, interesting topic. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen and we'll get it going. So Clouds of Torah and the Exodus Project presents written from or by Rome. So um, my good friend Steve is in the building today, and he's going to be helping us uh, break down some of these scriptures. So um, we're going to jump right into it. So um, Steve, if you want to go ahead and get that PowerPoint and we'll deal with it. Yes, sir. Rome and the Gospels. So we are introduced to Rome in the Gospels under the reign of King Herod and Caesar Augustus. Matthew 2, 1. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem. And Luke 2, 1. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. Thoughts? Well, the census that it's going to purport is the most nonsensical census possible. Um, censuses, as obviously we understand that the word comes from the Roman censor, which was the person who made the census, um, our censuses today are pretty similar to how the census would have been back then. A census counts you where you are, and then they know how much to tax. A census doesn't make you go back to where your ancestors lived so they could tax you later. Like, what kind of sense does that make? Should doesn't I get on a boat? <laughs> Should I get a boat and go back to Germany every year when they need to when they need to take a census of me? Right. That makes about as much sense as the rest of the book, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. So Okay, yeah. I mean, I, I agree. Um we're we're introduced to the New Testament under the Roman rule. Um, we got Caesar Augustus, we got King Herod, and we know there's a problem with dating Herod because we know Herod right, died right. and between Matthew and Luke, there's like a seven year gap. So yeah, um, this is just how we're inter introduced to the gospels. So yeah, we'll keep I moving. think, I think another, another big point there though, is wh why are more scholars not questioning that point? Well, why are more New Testament scholars not looking at that census and being like, this doesn't add up? I think some are. Um, well, you got scholars who are actually Christians and they'll, right. they will they tend to maybe ignore this, but the, the mm -hmm. non-Christian scholars definitely pick at this a lot. So. Okay. Roman, the gospels, the gospels do not speak too negative concerning Rome. Although Matthew made up a story about Herod killing children in an attempt to kill Jesus that neither Josephus or Luke mentioned. That would have been big news, and John the Baptist would have also been affected by this decree, as would probably all of Jesus's disciples, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we hear nothing about this besides Matthew cherry-picking Jeremiah and placing the story out of context and omitting the details. I cover this in a video. Well, he covers this in a video and his book on Amazon.com. The false, fil million cita false fulfillment citations of Matthew chapter 2, which also on my channel, I have a link in the description of all my videos for. So we also see a ruler of Rome eaten up by worms. It may not be historical, but this is the story. In Acts 12, 23, immediately because Herod did not give praise to God, an angel of the Lord struck him down, and he was eaten by worms and died. That's probably the worst that they speak about the Romans in the New Testament mm -hmm. as far as like condemning them for doing something because the people thought he was a God and he didn't give the glory to God. Cause you know, but for the most part, we see a, a very friendly Roman interaction in the, in the gospels. So we're mm -hmm. going to keep moving. Okay. We also see the Romans viewing their emperors as gods. Acts 12, 22. And the people kept shouting, the voice of a god and not of a man. Acts 14, 11. Now when the people saw what Paul had done, they raised their voice, voices saying, in the Lycaonian language, the gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. This is exactly how the Christians view Jesus. 
100%. God came down in the likeness of men. Hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. Yeah. So I, you I know, actually, I was actually just having a conversation, um, with a with a fellow counter missionary type personality, and he's he's very adamant about how syncretist Paul is. That Paul was probably a very very smart man, but Paul had a sprinkle of every worldview besides judaism and if he did have a sprinkle of judaism it was the hellenist side of judaism right so he was very much like rome is and was good at adapting rather than coming up with anything new do you know what i mean just morphed he just kept morphing into yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. he needed to do to the jew i'm a jew to the christian i'm a christian right yes you right. know exactly. however that how convenient and how greek of him right <laughs> so yeah so um you know, it's um, we see how, you know, the Romans looked at their emperors as gods and praised them as gods. And um, they thought the gods could come down as men. And this is exactly why Paul and the Christians also put Jesus in that category. You read Philippians chapter two and, you know, other verses. They consider Jesus a type of a God man. So Definitely. I mean, when you read Acts and you see Paul's home base was Antioch, which was, you know, that's, that's the capital of the Seleucid empire, the, the Greek Syrian empire. And right. then all the cities that it counts him going to, whether it be uh, Crete or he's from Tarsus, you know, there was a, a Greek philosophy university in, Tar in Tarsus. Um, geez, Ephesus, that was the, that was the big city that had the, basically they adapted every single God. Ephesus, you know, if you were selling something, they bought it, you know, so every every city that gets recounted in Acts that Paul and Barnabas were going to are just the Greco Roman, you know, centers for morphing religion. So why would Christianity be any different? Well, where are they first called Christians? Antioch. <laughs> Acts 11, right? So it's just, mm -hmm. it, makes, it makes a lot of sense. So, yeah. Okay, Luke 23, 1 through 4. Then the whole assembly rose and led him off to Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We have found this man subverting our nation. He opposes payment of taxes to Caesar and claims to be Messiah, a king. So Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. Then Pilate announced to the chief priests and, crowned, I, chief priests and the crowd, I find no basis for a charge against this man. Now, that right there doesn't make any sense. If Pilate asked anybody, are you the king of the Jews? And they said, yes, because that's ba he didn't say yes, but you have said so. That's implying yes. That yeah, right there. It. Yeah, that's what he's saying. That right there means I'm c calling myself a king and the Romans would not be having that. Right. So for Pilate to say, I find no basis for a charge against this man is not how the Romans roll. What would you say to that? <laughs> definitely not how the Romans roll. I mean, let's let's kick back uh, another hundred years prior to the uh, the Spartacus revolt. Um, Roman slaves who were gladiators revolted and tried to sack the city of Rome. I want to say it was for about thirteen straight miles. The Appian Way was nothing but nothing but crucifixions on both sides of the road. So you knew. You knew who it was messing around with the empire. You know, the, the first, at the first mention of revolt. So, so Rome isn't, wasn't a democracy like the United States. Do you know what I mean? They, they exerted all of their force militarily. I'm so, glitching up over here. Something's wrong. Yeah, I can see you're glitching up. Yeah. Oh my goodness. This is bad. There, you're good now. Okay. But yeah, they they made their they made their presence known militarily, and if you wanted to revolt against Rome, they put you on a cross and they set you up for everyone to see. And we even see in one of the Gospels that the thieves that were crucified with Jesus are called insurrectionists. So one of the Gospels at least got it right. The fact that they're on crosses, because I think a lot of Christians, I mean, as a as a kid, you kind of think Jesus is the only person to get on the cross, right? <laughs> 
<laughs> like mm-hmm. it's like no, part of his everybody. right it's like his is like he's the um mascot right <laughs> like that. Mm-hmm. yeah exactly for the cross so yeah the fact that other people like did you would you say did you say 13 miles yeah so the, the spark of this revolt, on a yeah, horse it was, it was a group you know? of slaves killed their masters <laughs> and one of the one of the regimes marched upon rome to try and sack it uh, I can't remember which general was the one that thwarted that, but, you know, the ones that didn't die in battle, they nailed them to crosses on the main highway through Rome for everyone to see. That's a long it's, stretch. It's, so. very public, it's a very public display of, you know, you go against the empire. Well, guess what? Everyone's going to know that you didn't go, th- you couldn't go through with it. So. so for verse four, for Luke to say, I find no basis for a charge after he told you to your face, I'm the king of the Jews. It's not historical at all. Right. And what's the charge they put on his head at the cro- on the cross? The king of the Jews, right? The king. They put the king. They literally put that. In Latin, Greek and Hebrew. So I want to ask y'all today, who speaks Latin? <laughs> How do you know what Super Bowl it is? What's on the back of a dollar? <laughs> where, where did Rome yeah. really go? So I don't want to I don't want to get too far off topic. So here we go. <laughs> okay, Luke twenty three thirteen through sixteen. Pilate called together the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, and said to them, "You brought me this man as one who was inciting the people to rebellion. I have examined him in your presence and have found no basis for your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. As you can see, he has done nothing to deserve death. Therefore, I will punish him and then release him." So before you say anything, I want to say, uh, if you're a Herod, right? If your if your grandpa, your dad, however you want to put this Herod in, you know, in comparison to the Herod in Luke chapter, um, the early the early Gospels, Matthew chapter one, <clears throat> I think it would have been passed along that there's going to be somebody born that's going to overthrow us. Because why would Herod want him killed in the first place, right? Right. <laughs> so Demand now all of a sudden we're yeah. just gonna let him go. When we yeah. know who this is, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> hmm. I'm gonna go. And with we no. know historically that the Herods were crazy to begin with. Like, right. we even have a story that one Herod, I want to say this is Herod the Great, the really nuts one who did like expanded the temple and all that. The one they say is who uh, tried to kill Jesus in the first place. It's either this one or the one in this. In this chapter here, he married the last Hasmonean queen because he wanted to feel like a legitimate Jew. And when she died, he covered her in honey to preserve her so he could still be with her. Like, that's how sick these people were. Wow. Like, but you're going to say that this guy, this eccentric madman, would have let a proposed messianic figure in his court, and he would have said, no, nah, you're cool, and let them go. Like, that's madness. Well, there's a contradiction, because on one, in the book of John, um, Pilate tells the Jews, you know, well, you, you basically charge him in your law. Like, use your laws to judge him. I don't want anything to do with this. So if they found him to be inside a rebellion and brought him to him, then he should have still gone along with what they said. Obviously, they did that is why they're bringing them to you. You see what right. I'm saying? Now, the, the, what Christians would say, well, he didn't incite rebellion against Rome. He was going to rebellion against, you know, the, the Pharisees or the, the leading parties at the time. Well, it really doesn't matter because it's still inciting rebellion. You basically right. become an, you're a heretic amongst the Jews. Mm-hmm. That's that's how they saw it, right? So according to the the the, the Christian narrative, the New Testament narrative, he's going against the Pharisees and the Sadducees, even the disciples of John. He he disagrees yeah. with them. They he's like yep. they're like we're fasting. How come you're not fasting? So he was on a different page than everybody else. Right. He was having his disciples not fast, which means Yom Kippur was they fasting? <laughs> on the other fast days, were you seeing Zechariah? Was he fasting? Right. So we we got a problem. With this 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 her- this new sect, which is considered heretical, yeah. so for Herod, one more comment. Sorry, one more ahead. comment on the previous slide about when when Jesus says, "You have said so." I don't necessarily read it the way you read it, 
I read it as him being like real smart about it. Like that's I what could, you say. I could see like, that. That's the charge you're bringing against me. You know. So if right. he's if he's willing in the governor, you know, in a vassal state, this is this is the guy in charge of you, and he's just going to be in there and be smart about it. Right. They play pilot off the Roman. They they play pilot off to be. You know, Mr. Merciful. Oh well, he's just being smart. You know, I'm just gonna let him go. Right. Now, come on. No. It's crazy. Well, a lot of people don't know the history of Pilot. I think oh, they had was, to like remove Pilot because he was too off the. Yeah, because he was too. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was too punitive. So they actually had to remove him from his post. Yeah. Right, and here it just says, "I will punish him and release him." You know, that's like, oh, let me give him a slap on the wrist and then he can go. Right. Mm -hmm. But he just told you he was the king. Now, did he tell Herod that? Herod would have went for him saying he's the king of the Jews. <laughs> I don't think so. So this is this is not historical Rome as we know it. This is like rewriting Rome's history of how they dealt with insurrection. Right. Oh, definitely. Definitely. So. OK. Okay. The Romans have no problem with Jesus in the Gospels, and Jesus has no problems with the Roman authorities. Matthew twenty two seventeen through 21. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay the imperial tax to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, you hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me in coin. Show me the coin used for paying the tax. They brought him a denarius, and he asked them, whose image is this, and whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, so give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. Jesus had no problem with the mark of the beast, the Roman coin, with whose inscription? If you did not pay, what would happen? Right? If you're not going to pay those taxes, it's not the mark of the beast in the book of Revelation, how they, you know, you know, write, write the, the scenario. But if you did not pay this tax, you got a problem. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole thing is, it's an image, mm -hmm. right? There's an image on the coin, just like there's an image on our money. So not going too deep into the mark of the beast, at this point, this was the money that if you didn't pay this money, you're going to have a problem with the superior authorities. Right. And Jesus said, pay it. Mm -hmm. Now, the tax collectors are called publicans in the different different translations, and this is basically anybody who was taking money from the Jews to pay to the Romans. Yep. Why would why would the so-called Messiah, who's supposed to ch change all this and get rid of these invaders in their home, taxing them on their land and property, be okay <laughs> with this? This is not a Messiah. This is somebody who is basically a friend of the enemy. Because he's not speaking yep. against them at all. Yeah, and just to elaborate on that a little farther, uh, Judas Iscariot. So this is this is controversial, but I like to side with that Iscariot doesn't mean man of the place. What kind of last name is that? Rather, it means Sicari. You know, one of the one of the um, assassins amidst the Jewish rebellion who were killing off the Romans. This is why he's vilified. And then we also, and this is confirmed in the text, have someone named Simon the Zealot in Jesus's little band, right? So literally called Simon the Zealot. Yeah. So if he had zealots and Sakari, potential Sakari, in his in his band, clearly they ain't gonna like the Romans. Nope. So how historical is this? If you have a zealot, you know the zealots were the ones that were all about we got to fight Rome. Are, are, is that in there to show that Jesus pacified the warrior or is it there because they got their facts wrong and they're writing, they're writing fairy tales? <laughs> well, I think they tried to clean it up when he says, you know, go buy some swords and they were like, we have two. And he said, it is, it is enough. But as soon as Peter pulls it out, oh, no, 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 no. You live by the sword, you die by the sword. So what was the point of telling them to get swords when they, they're not supposed to use them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is this is this is so 
Um, well, and that's out of two sides of his mouth too. When he says, "I did not come to bring peace, but a sword." Exactly. Right. And and when G when Peter uses his sword on a guy named Malchus, nonetheless, um, kingdom in Aramaic, if we all didn't know, uh, Jesus condemns him for it. So it, it makes no sense. Zero. It makes no sense. So this is how he felt about the, the Rome, the Romans taxing them in their land. He said, you know, pay the money. It didn't sound like he had any intention of getting rid of this problem. Right. At all. Matthew eleven nineteen. The son of man came eating and drinking. And they say, here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by her deeds. Matthew 18, 17. If they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. Okay, word studies. 5057. Telones, a publican, a tax collector, gathering public taxes from the Jews for the Romans. So we see he's called a glutton, a drunkard. Now, they couldn't make that statement if they didn't see him drunk, right? Like, you can't just call somebody a drunk if you didn't see him drunk, right? Right. Here's the deal. Everyone's drinking wine back then. So it's not com it's commonplace that someone's going to be having a drink here and there. Right. So you're only a drunkard if you're taking a little too much. A little yeah. too much, right? <laughs> now, let's say they're exaggerating. Okay. That's, that's, that's that part. But a friend of tax collectors and sinners, right? But then Jesus says, treat them as a pagan or a tax collector. How did they treat them? How would he have treated a pagan or a tax collector? What do you do? Mm. Because if he's sitting and eating with them, right, that's a charger. He, he sits with tax collectors and sinners, right? On the flip side of that, he's saying if people don't listen to you, treat them like a pagan or a tax collector. Is that, yep. is that the gospel? <laughs> what, what do you think about that one? <laughs> well, isn't, isn't the... Uh... Isn't the go-to, you know, kill them with love, turn the other cheek. <laughs> right. We're all brothers in Christ, right? Not that's, well. This doesn't sound like that to me. No. Um, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. That means look down your nose at them. Pretty look much, the right? Call, they're dogs, right? Yeah, that's right. Like the like the lady, right? Is mm -hmm. it right for us to give the dogs what belongs? Well, that's to what the that's what a pagan means. Right. So on one hand, we see Jesus kicking it with the tax collectors and the pagans, but we see how he really feels about them when people don't listen. You're one of them. Mm -hmm. Outgroup derogation is what that's called. If, if you're not with still, us, you're against us. Yep. Right. You see what I'm saying? He says, if they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. Well, it's interesting. I thought you were supposed to obey the scribes and Pharisees. Why would <laughs> they you tell Moses the a seat after all, right? Yeah, why would you tell the church? Treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. So, and we see who the tax collectors are. He basically saying treat them as a Roman. Mm -hmm. Luke 23, 8 through 11. When Herod saw Jesus, he was greatly pleased because for a long time he had been wanting to see him. From what he had heard about him, he had hoped to see him perform a sign of some sort. He plied him with many questions, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the teachers of the law were standing there, vehemently accusing him. Then Herod and his soldiers ridiculed and mocked him, dressing him in an elegant robe. They sent him back to Pilate. So Herod doesn't seem to be too impressed. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So, again, if everybody is saying that this is the Messiah, this is the King of the Jews... I don't think Herod would have just made fun of him. Right. Doesn't sound very likely. And dressing them in a robe. Like what, what? What's the point of making fun of him if you want him dead? Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like this is a threat to your throne. Your, your father wanted to kill him as a baby. And all you want is a sign from him? 
Because it doesn't say that Herod, did Herod ask him if he was king of the Jews? Hmm. Would right. he have told Herod? Yes, because that basically what says that would that would mean you're not the king, Herod. I am. Right. Because if Herod's verse, king of Judea, ain't that that's David's seat, right? Right. And verse 10, the chief priests and the teachers of the law were standing there vehemently accusing him. Which sect at the time was close with the Herodian palace? Definitely the not the Pharisees. Definitely yeah, not the Sadducees. Pharisees, right? So it's the right. Sadducees. Are they teachers of the law? Of course not. People sided with the Purushim, the Pharisaic movement. They were the movement of the people. They stuck to the Masora. You know, so you don't have no Pharisees in there accusing him. In fact, your only Pharisee that he's even quoted in the gospel, in the, well, Acts is basically a gospel. It's by Luke. Uh, says Gamaliel said, leave him alone. Leave him alone. Right. So, come on. Who is exactly those? If if Gamaliel was the 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 Godol Adol, the 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 like the chief rabbi, if you want to say, and he said leave him alone. This would this would this would even bring up Paul. Why was Paul so, you know, out out to out for blood? If if Gamaliel said leave him alone, man, we got bigger problems here than these little right. Christians running around. Mm -hmm. They they they're killing us. They're taxing us. You know, it, it's a problem here. In they, fact. These, Paul turned that around. He made it from a small problem into a big one. He, she blew it out of proportion. Of course, and of course, why would he even go to the Sadducees to get this so-called permission that they didn't have? They told Pilate, we don't have permission to kill anybody. So who really gave yeah. Paul permission to kill? Right. So we, we see Herod is not even, we don't even see Herod being a monster. We see Herod being a, basically somebody who, who, who makes jokes of, about Rebel, rebellious people. Right. They mocked him and, and dressed him up. That doesn't sound like something the Romans would do with somebody who's, you know, claiming to be the king that Herod was. <laughs> That's a direct th threat to his throne. And if he's got thousands of people that the gospel say have been following him around, right. Hosanna in the highest, yeah. <laughs> uh, having them come in, you know what I'm saying? Giving him a parade of Welcome the king, you know what I'm saying? Like this whole parade that they have in the gospels. Right. And the Herods, the Herods had a had a uh um complex to begin with because no one viewed them as legitimate kings. That's why Herod married the Hasmonean queen to kind of legitimize his role. Right? He was an Edomite who went through a you know BS conversion and so no one really revered him as the king of Judea besides the, the Romans, you know, um, no one, no one looked at him as a legitimate ruler or a rightful Torah ruler. So do you really think if someone who claims to be the rightful Torah ruler and someone who already has a legitimacy complex is just going to be like, oh, OK, I'm gonna put a cloak on you and let you go. Of course not. His blood be no. on the floor in the palace. Like, come on. Like, come they on, definitely people. would not let that ride. Definitely not. It doesn't make any sense. So, Pilate's encounter with Jesus. John 18, 21, 29 through 31. So Pilate came out to them and asked, what charges are you bringing against this man? If he were not a criminal, they replied, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said, take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. But we have no right to execute anyone, they objected. Well, then how did Paul get authority from these same Sadducees to kill him. Like, well, like we brought up earlier. Right. Not there. And Pilate doesn't seem to be worried about Jesus and the crowds of people following him around and calling him the king of the Jews, you know what I'm saying, um, with the palm trees and all the, the whole party and celebration that's going on. Right. And that itself, that itself is a Roman episode anyway. You know, the triumphal entry. Well, what was the, what was the, the, um, the parade call, the procession, the celebration, when a Roman general who was victorious came back to Rome, they gave him a procession. What was that called? It was called the triumph, right? <laughs> so the Roman generals have triumphs through the streets of Rome that end at the temple of Jupiter, but yet 
you call Jesus's entry into Jerusalem, which ends at the temple, the triumphal entry. And we're not supposed to recognize that. Nobody saw that. (laughs) Nobody saw that. huh? Herod didn't hear about that. Come on, man. You probably had snitches all over the place. Trying to get especially if the entire population of the city is there watching it. You think that's not going to draw the Romans eyes out? Doesn't like, make come any on. sense. Come on. John 18, stop 30, at 15. Three. What's that? We'll stop at 15 slides. Okay. John 18, 33 through 38. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus and asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea? Jesus asked, or did the others talk to you about me? Am I a Again, Jew? And he's getting smart. That's, that's yeah. a smart remark. Yeah, yeah. You Did you come up with that on your own? Like that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Pilate replied, your own people and chief priests handed you over to me. What is it you have done? And Jesus said, my kingdom is, kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. And Jesus answered, you say that I'm a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is truth? retorted Pilate. With this, he went out again to the Jews, gathered there, and said, I find no basis for charge against him. <laughs> he just told you he's the king. <laughs> and he was smart with you. He got like, smart. No. <laughs> I'm sorry for laughing, man, but <laughs> it's like. It just flips the narrative like that. I, I like, would like to, to see a true. When you walk out, you're like, no problem. <laughs> right. Oh, he's good. I want. I want to hear from. Well, I've heard. And I'm being funny. A true Roman historian with no bias read to you what they really would have done to somebody talking crazy to a crazy governor. <laughs> <laughs> like, really? I don't know. This wouldn't have, it would have it would not have gone like this. I find no basis for a charge. Come on. He told you he's a king. For one, he would have told Herod, hey Herod, we got a new king in town. Step aside. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's already not even um this this is not a historical encounter, is the is the point of this slide. You're talking crazy. You calling yourself a king, which is not which it would not have been tolerated. And this is right. why Jesus Barabbas was in jail mm-hmm. for an insurrection. He actually killed somebody too. But again, anybody inciting violence would have been dealt with. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Pilate's encounter with two men named Jesus with the same charges. Matthew twenty seven sixteen and seventeen. New International Version. At that time, they had a well-known prisoner whose name was Jesus Barabbas, or Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, which one do you want me to release to you? Jesus Barabbas, or Jesus who is called the Messiah. Mark 15, 7, a man called Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionists who had committed murder in the uprising. You brought me this man as one who was inciting the people to rebellion. So mm. the same charges, same name. What does Barabbas mean in Arabic there, Devon? Or not Arabic. Arabic. Son of the father. Yeah. <laughs> do you want <laughs> so the one who's got... the son of the father or the one who's the Messiah? Which one do you want? <laughs> Which Jesus do you want? <laughs> yeah. So in whose name are we going to be saved, right? If Acts 4.12, there's not a name given under heaven, not another name given under heaven by, by which we must be saved, right? So... What Jesus are you talking about? Mm. And the NIV right. tells you Jesus Barabbas. Most translations take that out. Just so y'all mm-hmm. know, look it up. Mm-hmm. Most of them just say Barabbas. They do not want to put that Jesus in front of there, but it's in the ancient texts. The fact also, that they side, to hide I'm not going to get too far into this, but everyone, check out, just Google the Gnostic Gospels and you will see this entire thing basically broken down as for what it is. I won't give you all any more than that. Just look it up for yourself. Gnostic. Yeah, please. G-N- G-N-O-S-T-I-C. Gnostic Gospels. Do your own research. But we see here 
Pilate is basically asking, you want Jesus, son of the father, or do you want <laughs> Jesus, the Messiah? <laughs> Both in jail for claiming to be somebody, right? Now, it doesn't really say that uh, Barabbas claimed to be somebody, but he was he was there to overthrow Rome, which was supposed to be Jesus's job. Mm -hmm. Really? So if, if anybody asked you, did Jesus actually attempt to overthrow the Romans? Yeah, he did, but not the Jesus that you think. Right. We don't want the Messiah. We want the we want the son of the father, the God man. We want the son. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, tell them again and again do and again. Do your homework. Do your homework and look up what he just mentioned, the Gnostic Gospels. Pilate is presented as a nice guy. Matthew 27, 19 to 24. While Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message. Don't have anything to do with this innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Bar Abbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? Asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus who is called the Messiah? Pilate asked. They all answered, crucify him. Why? What crime has he committed? Asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, crucify him. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. One dreamer of dreams, right? Yeah, I was Don't about listen. to say, why <laughs> is it always the non-Jew that's noticing and never the Jew? His wife has a dream. Do nothing with this guy. The Magi see the star. You know, Magi are the, the priests, Zoroastrian priests. They're the ones who see the star and show up at Herod's palace. Like, why, why is it the non-Jews are the ones that are recognizing all these things? But yet the Jews, oh, no, crucify him. We don't want him. We don't want him. <laughs> <laughs> He's not doing his job is why the Jews is good on him. You're not supposed to be here, uh, Pilot, Herod. We we need a son of David sitting on that throne, and you not him. Mm -hmm. But again, the fact that she says he's an innocent man. So these crowds following this guy around, they they you know, he's claiming to be a king of the Jews. That's innocent in Rome. Really? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. It's just that's just not how it worked back then. And it, you know, it's stressed that he's innocent. It's stressed that Pilate keeps saying, "What crime has he committed?" He told you when you asked him. And you know, what, whatever happened to the verse, he was silent before his oppressors. Doing a lot of right. talking now, <laughs> right? How are they getting these answers out of him? So. Pilate, the nice guy, like we got so many problems with this 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 chapter right here, this, these verses. Yeah. Pilate was not a nice guy. Look it up for yourself and see what the Romans thought of Pilate. They had to literally m remove him. Right. He so, was too cruel for the people who put miles of crosses on the Appian Way. But yet this guy is too cruel. <laughs> right. And he's the one who let him go. <laughs> he's the nice guy. That's just wow. Yeah. Okay, Matthew 27, 57, and 58. As evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Ordered that? Why? Did he give Pilate some money? Was he being just another, another, is it, he was having a good day, right? Take the body. Why wouldn't they leave it up there? Of all the of, if all the other people were up there hanging, why was Jesus the only one that they wanted to take down? Right. Was he the only the other two thieves? Were they left up there on Shabbat? Right? Chances are they were Jews, right? It doesn't say if they were Romans or whatever, it just says that there was two two people up there next to him. How come their bodies were allowed to stay, but they had to take down Jesus? Mm -hmm. Another Why? point, Joseph of Arimathea. What is Josephus's Hebrew name? Yosef. Yosef Barmatis Yahoo. That sounds a little bit too close, doesn't it? We got two Josephs. 
coming for the body. It's interesting they bring up this Joseph, but they don't say what happened to Jesus' dad, Joseph. Right. He just disappears after the virgin birth. He's just no longer in the story. It doesn't say if he died, if he ran away, if he was killed. He just disappears from this whole story. Mm-hmm. Nobody even asks why. You know, it's kind of weird. But um, Pilate says, give him the body. Why? If anybody else would have asked for the body of those two criminals on the on the cross with him, what would have happened? We don't hear nothing <laughs> about <not>. them. <laughs> Get them yourself. If you would be today, <laughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> when it says today you will be with me in paradise, if he was still up on the cross, what happened? That means the birds picked out his eyes, and they, they, you know, <laughs> he was left to the elements, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Up there in rot, he sat up there in rot. Was he? Did he get resurrected when the, the other zombie apocalypse happened? Happened when the tombs <laughs> opened up? Did he come down off of that cross? Right. He doesn't say, but you know, it just Pilate being presented as a nice guy here, it doesn't work. He he mm-hmm. wasn't that guy. We'll end here. Okay, last slide for this time. So much for one name under heaven. Acts four twelve. Salvation is found in no one else. But there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Numbers 13, 16. These are the names of the men Moses sent to explore the land. Moses gave Hosea, son of Nun, the name Joshua, Yehoshua. Nehemiah 9, 5. And the Levites, Yeshua, uh, Kadmiel, Bani, (laughs) Hashabnea, Sherebiah, Hodia, Shebaniah, and Pethahiah said, stand up and praise the Lord your God, who is from everlasting to everlasting. Blessed be your glorious name, and may it be exalted above all blessing and praise. So if you told somebody you believed in Jesus, you're going to have to say which one. (laughs) They would have to say which one. They would have said Joshua. (laughs) Right. You had to make a very serious distinction. Jesus, the Messiah, Jesus, Barabbas, uh, Jesus, Jesus, son of none. Son of Noon, uh, the one of the Levites, Jeshua, which would be translated as Yeshua as well. You had Jesus, surnamed Justice. You had Bar Jesus, the uh, Son of Jesus, the Sorcerer. Yeah. So you got Son of the Father, and then you got Son of Jesus. So this this name in Acts four twelve has no exclusivity. It's not exclusive to Jesus. He's not the only person named that, and it's very. It's a very popular name, actually. Yeah. Yep. So, um, if the Romans would have heard about any of these people calling themselves, you know, the 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 king of the Jews or whatever, they would have had to search out who was being talked about. Just like we seen, do you want Jesus Barabbas or do you want Jesus the Messiah? Mm-hmm. So. Yep. Today, when you hear Jesus, most people only think of one. But in those times, this was not the case at all. Yeah, definitely not. So just something I wanted to bring up. So um, we're going to stop there. This is going to be part one. We're going to do a part two. So um, right on for you, Steve, for coming out. Uh, Y'all check out the Exodus Project. Uh, Check out his YouTube page. He just hit 1,000 subscribers. May he (laughs) double that in a week. Uh, Keep going. You know what I mean? Um, (laughs) He's uh he's turning up the heat on that. Got a lot of good topics on there, um, very good content. Um, I'm gonna put a link to all his all his uh, information in the um, description box, and we will see you guys next time. And shalom, shalom. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me on, my man. Yes, sir.